What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, Alex. Today is Wednesday. I got a very special sports video for y'all today. But first, before I make the YouTube video, um, I wanted to change up the location because I get tired of filming inside the house. And I get tired of filming outside the backyard. Plus, I don't want to do filmmaking or do a YouTube video inside the house when my dad's inside the house because it's rude and disrespectful and you don't want to film when you're in someone's presence, especially when they're at home and they're not properly dressed. And then this video goes viral and everybody sees it and that's not what everybody want to see. So, plus I got to make a shout out. Now there was this um, fine ass woman 24 hours ago that was in a black car um, that was passing through the area and she saw my YouTube videos and she found out that I think she's cute. Now she might be light skinned, a light-skinned black girl, or she might be Latina. I don't want to get the wrong race, but whatever she is, thank you. I appreciate that because the more y'all say hi, good morning, good afternoon, the more motivation and confidence I get to go on camera to make these kick-ass YouTube videos and this badass content. But this is on my sports channel because on my other YouTube channel, um, basically... <laughs> Basically, to sum it up, I'm trying to give that channel a break. You know, two or three days, and then I might go to the Grove, and that's where I might go back on my original channel and drop another good video. So this one's going to be related to sports. I'm not finished with my wrestling series. So if anybody else wants some shout-outs, all you got to do is watch my YouTube videos. It doesn't matter if it's sports, television, film, anime, video games, comic books movie reviews in the near future doesn't matter what you watch on youtube in my category i got like a lot of categories i got like seven to eight maybe nine youtube channels each channel looks the same but they're different sometimes you might see the same video on two or three different channels sometimes i mix and match sometimes i might talk about television and film sometimes i might talk about music or sports so if you want me to give you a shout out just watch the videos you know, you don't have to, you know, put a comment section in, but if you want to say that was a good video or you can improve and do better, you can speak to me in person and just say hi and I'll give you a shout out. You know, you tell me your first name. You, got, you ain't got to tell me your middle name, your last name. Just tell me your first name and I'll give you a shout out. Male or female, young or old, black or white. And for the lovely lady that said, what's my name? My name's Alex. Sometimes I go by the name of Alex, Alexander. Sometimes people give me nicknames. You can say Alexander the Great, you know, so that's my name. And eventually I will be giving you guys shout outs. So thank you for the shout out. That's your shout out and things of that nature. So this is a sports video. It's going to be the top 11 greatest tag teams in wrestling of all times. I'm not finished with my wrestling series. This is about tag teams. The season finale might get broken up into two parts. Because in order for me to talk about the best champions in wrestling, it might take up a whole entire hour. And that would be a long video and it would kill my cell phone and my SD card. So, bear with me. It's going to take a while to finish the series on wrestling. Because next month, you know, everybody want to see basketball and it's going to go back to original sports content. Because I know that's what y'all are really rating for is basketball, football, baseball, and hockey. All right, coming at number 11 is Owen Hart and British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. Now, in the late 80s, early 1990s, these two were a force to be reckoned with. You can't mention Owen Hart, God rest his soul, rest in peace, the brother of Bret Hart, without mentioning British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. You can't mention British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith, versus Owen Hart. They are a three-time tag team champion, and they've been wrestling for like almost 12 years. And basically, they were good. Hold on. All right. So I think the video might have clicked off, so let me do that again. I won't know until I get back into the house. So, the name of the video is called The Top 11 Greatest Tag Teams 
in wrestling of all times. All right, that's the name of the video. It might have broken the two parts by accident. Sometimes the cell phone is old. It'll be time to buy a brand new cell phone. Coming in number 11 is Owen Hart and British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. You cannot mention Owen Hart without mentioning British Bulldog. You cannot mention British Bulldog without mentioning Owen Hart. You know, they are a three-time tag team champions. And they've been wrestling for like 12 and a half years. And they were good as a tag team specialist. Owen Hart was the more younger, energetic, freestyle, off-the-top rope type of guy. You know, he was that premier wrestler in the late 80s, early 90s. And he kind of reminds us of Johnny the Karate Kid, like Chris Jericho said in the documentary. And British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith was like Lex Luger. He was a power wrestler. He had the strength, the power. You know, as JR said, look at the strength. The strength, the strength of Davy Boy Smith, British Bulldog. And the fact that they lasted as long as they did, they were able to compete with any tag team um, in the WWE. And when these guys would be around the world competing, they were good. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't give this tag team a lot of respect and credit that it deserved. Because in their prime, no one could touch them. Now, eventually, Owen would become a two-time Intercontinental Champion, and Bulldog would try to compete for the world title when he had his incredible championship matches with Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, his brother-in-law, and Big Daddy Cool Diesel. He had shots at the world title, but when you mention it, they were good as a tag team. You know, so they'll go down in history as the greatest. Coming in at number 10 is The Miz and John Morrison. Now, I actually have seen The Miz and John Morrison wrestle like 14 years ago when they were here in Los Angeles, California at Venice Beach. Now, The Miz is a better tag team wrestler than he is at singles. Now, I know he don't want to hear that because the reality is he did win the United States title four times, the Intercontinental title like five or six times. You know, he is like a six-time tag team champion. And then he just recently won the tag titles again. So he's actually won the tag team titles seven times in his career. So he's been doing wrestling for 13 years, but he's a seven-time tag team champion. Now, he's tag team with other people like Randy Orton, Edge. You know, he's tag team with other guys. But those don't really compare to when you put The Miz with John Morrison. It's like you can't touch these guys. It's like they're like a younger version of all the tag teams combined. You know, John Morrison's the handsome, good-looking movie star who just happens to kick your ass. And Miz is your, is your tag team specialist who's good at basically wrestling. Yeah, he was on a TV show called The Real World, but he transitioned from, it, from, from reality television to a professional wrestler to a breakout action star in television and film to being on the Divas. Like, yeah, he was one of the wrestlers that got to be on the damn show. John Morrison, it wasn't until later in his career in TNA that he became a big star. You see, he's back in the WWE, and they can do good segments. They can do good scripts. So they're, they're, they're untouchable. All right, coming in at number nine is Crime Time tied with New Day. Now, Crime Time is one of these teams that was the first... They were like a callback to Harlem Heats. Like, with Crime Time, I saw Booker T and Stevie Ray all over again. And they did win the tag titles like twice. But, unfortunately, the team didn't last because, you know, there were differences. You know, GDT wanted to be a, a, a single stars. And Chad wanted to be, you know, the next world champion. And he did wrestle for about six and a half years. And this year he tragically lost his life in saving his son. And you can't have a list without mentioning crime time. You know, if it weren't for them, they would have not been as entertaining. So they were an entertaining tag team that was taken serious when they won the tag titles and had memorable matchups. One of my favorite moments is when Shad tricked Shaquille O'Neal and took Shaquille O'Neal's wallet. And Shaq was like, where my wallet at? Where my mother wallet at? 
and the fact that they would allow somebody like a professional wrestler to interact with Shaquille O'Neal and then to make a six-man tag match where it was Crime Time and Shaq versus The Miz and some other wrestler in The Big Show. And like I said, it's too bad we never got Shaquille O'Neal versus The Big Show. That would have been entertaining to see at the Royal Rumble or at WrestleMania. So, yeah. On the other hand, we have New Day. Xavier U- um, Woods. Xavier Woods. You got B.E. Glinston. And then you got Kobe Kingston. And the fact that they are a four-time tag team champion is incredible. They won the tag titles like four times. And they managed to hold on to it for like seven and a half months before that title reign came to an end. And they got to compete against other tag teams. So you can't just put crime time on here. They're tied with New Day. Coming in at number eight is Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash. The cool dudes with attitudes. Before there was Shawn Michaels and Triple H, there was Once Upon a Time in the 1990s, Big Daddy Cool Diesel, Kevin Nash, and the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. And they were a powerful tag team duel. They would face people like 1-2-3 Kid and Lex Luger, Doink the Clown. They would take on um, Bam Bam Bigelow and another guy he tag team with. Then they would take on the Hart Foundation, you know, British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith, and um, Owen Hart. And they would compete with these guys for the tag titles. And they became a two-time tag team champions. Now, unfortunately, that didn't last. Hold on. I apologize. We got the um, dumpster truck coming through in the neighborhood. So I apologize for the audio. Um, But like I was saying, they were tag team specialist this showed that Kevin Nash could do more stuff at this time they didn't think guys that were seven foot tall 300 pounds of muscle could wrestle and Kevin Nash showed that he could wrestle at this time Kevin Nash was the world champion and a tag team champion Shawn Michaels was the tag team champion and the intercontinental champion and these guys were collecting all the championship belts these guys were kicking ass and taking names for like six and a half months And they were making a storyline out of this. Like, this was to make Shawn Michaels into a big star. Kevin Nash was world champion for, like, from November of 1994 to November of 1995, where he held on for the title for almost a whole entire straight year before losing to Bret Hart and then ultimately losing the tag titles to 1-2-3-Kid and Lex Luger and then trying to win them back from Owen Hart and British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. Those were some classical tag team matches. And ultimately, people always ask who was the better tag team, Shawn Michaels or Big Daddy Cool Diesel. This weren't the first time Shawn Michaels had even won the tag title. When he was with Marty Jannetty, the rocker, he had won the tag titles once. But when he was with Big Daddy Cool Diesel, he was collecting all the championship belts. Kevin Nash was the world champion. Shawn Michaels was the Intercontinental Champion, and then they won the tag titles. They had done something in tag team wrestling and in wrestling history, period, that had never been done before. Coming in at number seven is Los Guerreros, Eddie Guerrero and Chavo Guerrero. When you get cousins that team up, you don't know what you're going to get from Eddie Guerrero. You don't know what you're going to get from Chavo Guerrero. Like, all of those songs that you saw in the commercials was actually their promos and segments on Monday Night Raw, SmackDown. One of my favorite commercials is when Eddie Guerrero would trick somebody by knocking on the door and saying, we're going to cut your grass. And then all of a sudden, they cheated you out of your money and never cut your grass. And then Chavo would be in the car. And then the next episode, they would go to different places basically stealing money but never doing the actual job that they were paid to do and it worked for their characters they eventually became three-time tag team champions you know they got to compete against the hardy boys they got to compete against edge and christian the dugley boys and they got to show that they're on the level they would wrestle with kurt angle and sheldon benjamin and those were some classical matchups it's just unfortunate no one gives them to the respect and credit that they deserve. Eventually, Eddie would leave and go off to be a bigger star. He would then eventually become the world champion and beating Brock Lesnar. 
Chavo would end eventually win the United States title, the Intercontinental title, and would tag team and have incredible matchups with Rey Mysterio Jr. Coming in at number six is Edge and Christian tied with APA. Now, if you take a horror movie called The Lost Boys, which is vampires mythology, and you get Edge and you get Christian, you get Edge and Christian. That rock song, Edge come out with the glasses, the black trench coat jacket, two guys from Canada, dun dun dun, you think you know me. And these guys lasted for a long time. Other tag teams, after five or ten years, they break up. It was like 12 years that they were together. It was like they were trying to repackage and create Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash all over again. Edge was the more taller guy. Christian was like the more young, energetic specialist. It was like we were watching Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash all over again. They managed to become an eight-time tag team champion. They won the tag titles eight times in 12 years. Edge would win the United States title. Christian would win the Intercontinental title. And these guys were doing the same thing again. They were cleaning out the division, winning all the belts. Edge and eventually became a bigger star than Christian and made himself into a 11-time world champion. You know, he won the world heavyweight title four times, the WWE title like five times, and he basically wrestled all your big names. Christian would then eventually go to TNA and win the world title and then make his way back to WWE where he won one championship. But when you think of Edge and Christian, these guys have lasted for a long time. Nobody in the history of wrestling has lasted as long as Edge and Christian. On the other hand, you have Bradshaw. You have Farouk. Before Bradshaw became champion, you, they were once a part of a tag team. There was The Undertaker. There was Kane. There was the corporate ministry. Back in the Attitude Era. And these guys were dangerous. These guys were like... You don't want to mess with these guys because these guys uh, will run you out of the street. They won the tag titles three times. And what made this work was they had cigars in their mouth. Like they played cards backstage. And then 30 minutes later, they came to the ring. They went in there. They fought you for 15 minutes to kick your ass. They go back backstage. They got cigars in their mouth. And when people would disturb... Uh, 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 Bradshaw and Farouk from doing car, um, cards, Farouk would look at you and go, damn. And it worked for his character. Of course, Farouk would retire, get put in the Hall of Fame, and Bradshaw became world champion and had incredible feuds with Eddie Guerrero, Triple H, Batista, Kurt Angle, you know, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Booker T. He would be put in classical matches like that. Coming in at number five is Undertaker and Kane, a.k.a. the Brothers of Destruction. Undertaker would be the guy that would come in and beat your ass, and Kane would be the more aggressive type. He just wouldn't talk. And they managed to win the tag titles six times. So Undertaker became a six-time tag team champion, and you notice he did it with one partner. Like, Undertaker's teamed up with The Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H, but when he won the tag title six times, it's with Kane. And Undertaker was dangerous. Kane was dangerous. These guys would team up, and when they team up, you couldn't stop these guys. If it was the Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, they would kick your ass. That's that, that all there was to it to their characters. Number four is Rick and Scott Steiner. Now, these guys wrestle for like three decades, the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. And they've managed to win the tag titles not once, not twice, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. Yes, I'm doing the LeBron James. Not eight, not nine, not ten, not eleven. But they won it 12 to 13 times they won the tag titles. They wrestled everywhere. WCW, WWE, Japan, Canada, Mexico, everywhere they went, AWA, the AWA, NWA, they wrestled for every promotion. Lasted three decades. Rick Steiner was the specialist. Scott Steiner was your freestyle wrestler. Now, when it comes to tag team wrestling, Scott Steiner is the greatest tag team partner to have. Now, when he started to become a single star, 
his career took a big, hold on, I apologize, we got the fire truck coming out, so I apologize for the uh, big minor distraction. Sometimes the noise can be very disturbing and very annoying, but when you hear fire trucks, hold on. When you hear fire trucks and paramedics, I apologize for that. But like I said, these guys were on top of their game. There was no question, doubt about it. Um, as a singles wrestler, Rick Steiner had a better career than Scott. Scott did become the WCW World Heavyweight Champion in WCW, but his title reign was short-lived. Like Scott did beat, did have seven championship title defenses but he lost to Booker T in 2001, and that kind of showed right there that if it's tag team, he's on the same level. Where if it's world title, you know, it ruins Scott Steiner. The pressure of being in the main event, it kind of ruins Scott Steiner. Like, that's what kind of hurted his ability as a single star, whether as a tag team specialist, he's always on the highest level of wrestling. All right, coming in at number three is the Hardy Boys tarred, tied with Harlem Heat. Now, the Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy are the high flyers. High flyers because we expect them to be the best of the best. They managed to become an eight-time tag team champion. So they won the tag titles in WWE eight times, and they would even tag team in TNA Wrestling and managed to win the tag titles in TNA four times. So they're like a 12 or 13 time tag team champion. But there is another team who did it first. Stevie Ray and Booker T. Can't have the world's greatest tag team wrestlers without mentioning Booker T. Before Booker T became a five time, five time, five time WCW World Heavyweight Champion. He was once upon a time a 10 time tag team champion. And him and his brother came in the 1990s, kicked ass, take names, with Cincinnati Sherry, God rest his soul, rest in peace. And nobody could touch Booker T. Nobody could touch Stevie Ray. These were two black men in their prime. When you want to talk about the greatest black tag team champions in professional wrestling, Booker T and Stevie Ray are always mentioned. They won the tag titles ten times. And they competed against the Steiner brothers. They competed against the Four Horsemen and what's going to be considered the number one tag team of all times on this list. All right, coming in at number two is the Four Horsemen tie with the Dugley Boys. Now, the Four Horsemen is like one of the greatest tag teams that ever lived. You get the Nature Boy, 16-time World Heavyweight Champion, baby, Jeff Fly, Wade Dillon, top sum of a gun, Oh, the Nature Boy! And the enforcer, Art Anderson. He has gone to the restroom and attacked more football players, baby. The nature boy. You get Ric Flair, you get Art Anderson, and you pair them up with two other guys, and you got the four horsemen. They managed to win the tag titles. Ric Flair was the world champion. Art Anderson was the television champion. And they were the tag team champions. They were the first or the second tag team to clean out the division every single time. And these guys would do it everywhere. They did it in WCW. They did it in the NWA, AWA. They did it in Japan. They did it in Canada, Mexico. Everywhere they go, they kick ass. And then even when they restacked the team, they brought in Lex Luger at one time. They brought in Sting at one time. Every time they would add in new members to do their tag team. On the other hand, you've got the Dugley boys. you got Bubba Dugley. you got Devon Dugley. They managed to win the tag titles 13 times in 20 years. And no other tag team comes this high on the list like the Four Horsemen and the Dugley boys. Because the Dugley boys faced everyone and the Dugley boys beat everyone. And these guys are like in their 50s and they're still wrestling strong. The Four Horsemen, they're going to forever stand the test of time. Coming in at number one, the number one tag team of all times. Uh, what a rush. The Road Warriors managed to win the tag titles, a record of 12, maybe 13, possibly 14 
Tag Team Championships. Wrestle, wrestle for 20 years. That's almost three decades. Wrestled in WCW, WWE, wrestled in Japan, Canada, Mexico. War, you got Road Warrior Hulk, Road Warrior Animal. These guys were legends, icons in the tag team division. No matter who they got in the ring with, they would kick your ass, go to a nightclub, talk to some girls, come back 24 hours later. And it was like they had football pads on, like they played for the Chicago Bears, got in the ring, and you got your ass whooped. And you could have been the biggest, the strongest. You probably, been, probably would have been one tough son of a bitch, and they would whoop your ass. Like, they would take guys that thought they were tough and make you go run and cry to your mommy and your daddy. And these guys were not afraid to fight for real. Most wrestlers, they fake wrestling. These guys could wrestle inside the ring, and these guys can fight outside the ring. Like, they would go to the bars and drink two or three, maybe five rounds, and then they would whoop your ass. And you would be the one calling the police, and you're supposed to be a tough guy. And, and, and these guys would fight. Like, literally fight for real. And there's only a few tag teams that could rise on their level and touch them. The Dugley Boys, the Steiner Brothers, and the Harlem Heats. But if you take this tag team of the past and put them in today's tag team system, they kick everybody's ass on this list. Like the Harley Boys, Edge and Christian, all of them get their ass kicked. Because it's the Road Warriors. They're legends. They're icons for a specific reason. 